work in math 98 we are going to take a peek at uh, multiplying radicals for this section 9.4 and before we get started I just want to remind you of a couple of things uh, that you've done before if we have something like 6x times 5y uh, these are multiplied together so we can multiply in whatever order we want and we can we can combine the 6 and the 5 right 6 times 5 is 30 and then we're just going to have x times y also uh, if we have some multiplication and it's multiplied by something that has some addition or subtraction in it that distributes into there all right so this is like 14x minus 21 and then two more understandings we have about multiplication already if i have something like mm, plus 4 times x minus 3 and i want to multiply that out right we can we can make the box uh we do this array method for it or we can distribute everything to everything, x times x, 4 times x, x times negative 3, 4 times negative 3, and then combine like terms. And then similarly, one last uh, review idea for us. If I had like uh, x plus 5 squared, to square something means to multiply by itself. So x plus 5 squared is uh, x plus 5 times x plus 5. So it's not x squared plus 25, it's x squared, boop, boop plus 10x 5 times 5 plus 25 so that that doesn't just distribute across that addition it means x plus 5 times itself x plus 5 okay couple of pieces and another thing that and another thing that we've talked about in this course is if we have uh, the square root of a times b it's the same as the square root of a times the square root of b and again this is really only if um, at least one of these is non-negative. If they're both negative, this doesn't apply. What that means is if I have something like root uh, square root of 3 times square root of 5, that's the same as the square root of 3 times 5, which is the square root of 15. So those are the, so those are the same thing. You know, and sometimes in this type of things, like let's say we had square root of 3 times square root of 27, sometimes this is reducible. Uh, that's the same as 3 times 27, which is 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. All right, so let's dig into some problems. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 10, well, that is the square root of 2 times 10, which is the square root of 20, which we know 20 is 4 times 5, right, is 2 root 5. I'm going to come back and do a little little side on this. I'm going to highlight this because I want to talk about another way we could think about that as well, but I'll come back to it in a minute. All right, 3 root 6 times 2 root 12. Well, these things are all multiplied together. 3 times the square root of 6 times 2 times the square root of 12. So I can do this in whatever I want. want. So I'm going to say 3 times 2 is 6, and uh, the square root of 6 times 12 is like that and now you know you could go like 6 times the square root of 72 you know that's 36 times 2 so then we have 6 times 6 times the square root of 2 which is 36 root 2 and now on this problem and the problem that I just did um, I'm gonna think about another way I could do it too because this way is fine it's a little brute force ish for example, like this 2 root 10, another route I might be able to go with that is I could say this is root 2. Let me break up that 10. That's like 2 times 5. And notice what I have here then is this is a 4, square root of 4, square root of 5. So it ends up being 2 root 5. You can break these up into pieces. In other words, if I go back to this one where I had 6 times 6 root 12, six out there is fine but six 12 is six times two and if i go six times six that's a 36 and then i'm going to square root that which gives me my six that i brought out right like you can if you can see these squares in here before you combine them don't don't combine them just to tear them apart if you can see the pieces you can you can tear them out just kind of being kind of being clever when you do some of this work so let's take a look at this last one uh five times five is 25 and then I have the square root of 3 
times 6. I'm going to say 6 is 3 times 2. And notice the square root of 3 times 3 is 3, right? This is a 9. So I'm going to square root it. So this is 25 times square root of 9 is 3 times square root of 2, which is 75 root 2. And if you don't like this, you don't have to do it. Like you can multiply that out to the 18 and then reduce that 18 down to the 3 root 2. That's, that's a perfectly legitimate way to do this problem. All right, let's give these a go. Uh, 27 times x to the fifth, uh, square root of that times the square root of 5x squared. So I'm going to do a little pieces here. This is, I'm just going to break this one up early. This is 9 times 3. So uh, 27 is 3. And then this root 3 is going to get multiplied by this root 5. So there's going to be a root 15 in here. And let's see, x to the fifth times x is x to the sixth. So I have a square root of x to the sixth, which is x to the third. And so I'm going to throw that out here like that. And if you, again, if you don't want to do it in pieces, multiply it all together and then break it down. That's fine. And sometimes it's real uh, advantageous to do it that way. For instance, like here, square root of 5y cubed uh, times square root of 20. So 5 times 20 is 100. And it's just kind of nice to see that square. Uh, y cubed times y squared is y to the fifth. So I'm going to break that up because I know if I want to square root that, I could think of this as y to the fourth times y. I've got my piece of square root of 100 is 10. Square root of y to the fourth is y squared. Square root of y is square root of y. Uh, wow, okay. So, uh, 2 square root of that times 12 square root of that. So 2 times 12 is 24. And I'm just going to throw all this in the square root and see what I can do with it. a to the 14th times a. I think I'll leave that as a to the 14th times a. Because if I make it an a to the 15th, I'm just going to break it back down so I can square root the 14th part. Uh, let's see, 6 times 30. I'm going to think of this as 6 times. 30 is 6 times 5. So notice I have the square root of 36 here, which is a 6. So 24 times 6. Uh, the 5 is going to stay in the root. Square root of a to the 14th, I can cut that in half, a to the 7th, and the 5 and the a are still in there. And then I just have to figure out what 24 times 6 is, and I think I will be lazy about that and say uh, 24 times 6. 144. Oh, that's nice. I don't know why I think that's nice. I will just live with it. 5a. Oh, the square root of 3 squared. The square root and the squaring are kind of undoing each other, right? This is going to end up being 3, a positive 3. If I think about it, it's, it's square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3 times 3, which is the square root of 9. I wouldn't write all this out, but you can if you like, which is 3. So the square root of a square undoes each other. The trick is when it's got a negative in here, this doesn't end up being negative 10, right? Because this, the negative is being squared. So this would be negative root 10 times negative root 10. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this is root 10 times 10. So that's a positive 10. And one of the things I want you to be careful about too is the difference uh, between this and what I'm about to write, which is negative square root of 10 squared. Because in this case, the negative is not squared. This is uh, square root of 10 squared, negate that answer. So this actually ends up being negative. Square root of 10 squared is 10, negative 10. So if the negative's inside, it's being taken to the power as well. If it's not, it's not being taken to the power, just that's being taken to that, to that exponent. So thinking about these then, 2 root 7 squared. Notice everything's in there squared, so it all happens twice. If you want to write this out, you could say it's 2 root 7 that should be a 7, multiplied by 2 root 7. So 2 times 2 is 4. Notice the 2 is getting squared, and the root 7 is getting squared. Root 7 times root 7, well, we know that's 7. And 4 times 7, those are multiplied together, is 28. All right, in this case, the negative 4 is getting squared. That's a 16. The root 5 is getting squared. That's a 5. 
16 times 5, um, I think it's 80. Is 80. Negative 4 squared, that's interesting. Negative 4 squared. One of the things I see people uh, make a mistake on a calculator is that if they want to go negative 4 squared, they go negative 4 squared. See how this is different than that, right? This is going to be negative 16, whereas this is negative 4 times negative 4. This is positive 16. All right, uh, a little different type of problem. It's 5 times 3 minus root 2. We did a, a polynomial type problem. This is the start. This multiplication is going to get distributed across that addition. So 5 times 3 is 15 minus 5 times root 2 is 5 times root 2. Notice that's not a root 5. It doesn't go into the root with that. It's just 5 times root 2. So next one, same idea, distribute. Th root 3 times 5 is 5 times root 3 minus, and now we have root 3 times root 6. Uh, which you could say is root 18, which you can then break up 9 times 2 into 3 root 2. And we can't combine those with addition because they're different. They're not like terms. All right, uh, this times this. Sometimes it helps to break these up first. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Just kind of makes some things easier or not. Root 12 times root 3 is the square root of 36. Plus uh, root 12 times 24. I don't want to go 12 times 24, but I am going to say 24 is 12 times 2. So I'm going to break it up this way. And then I have 12 times 12. And if I square root that, that gives me a 12. So square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 144 is 12. And the 2 is still being square rooted. So we've got this times this. All right, uh, two ways you can think about doing this. You could just do that distributive property, right? Distribute everything to everything. So 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times root 2 is 4 root 2. 3 times negative root 2 is negative 3 root 2. And then root 2 times root 2 is 2. Combine up some like terms. 12 plus 2 is 14. 4 of these minus 3 of these is 1 of these plus root 2. And if you'd rather uh, do it this way, you could do that array as well, right? Where you go like put the 3 root 2 along one side, put the 4 minus root 2 along the other side. And notice you're doing all the same multiplications. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times root 2 is 4 root 2. And then combine like terms from there. So similar, let's think about this. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 2 root 7. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Boom, I'll write it here just so it looks better. Uh, negative 2 root 7 times 4 is negative 8 root 7. Then negative times an, oh, this is a negative times a negative, right? So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Root 7 times root 7 is 7, and those are still multiplied together, so 14, 28. Combine up some like terms. What do I got? 40, and these are both negative, so minus 14 root 7. Cool. Notice in these, like when this radical's the same, we get that middle term. Now look at these. These are different cases, 5 plus root 3 and 5 minus root 3. Interesting what happens here. 5 times 5 is 25. Uh, 5 times negative root 3 is negative 5 root 3. And then root 3 times positive 5 is positive 5 root 3. Look at what's going to happen to that middle term. It's going to drop out. And then root 3 times negative root 3. Positive times a negative is negative. Root 3 squared is 3. So I basically have 25 minus 3, which is 22. So notice when I have like this plus this. Uh, this plus that, this minus that, and I multiply them together, that middle term drops out. And I end up with just a number that doesn't have any radicals in it. Um, these are called conjugates. Um, a plus B and A minus B are conjugates. It's also a difference of squares uh, multiplication. Remember that from algebra.
6 times 6 is 36. See how the middle term is going to drop out? 18 root 2, negative 18 root 2. 3 times negative uh, 3, this is negative 9. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, so that's negative 18. 36 minus 18 is 18. So if I ever end up in a situation where like, I want to get rid of a radical, I can multiply by the conjugate, right? If I have 6 plus that, I can use 6 minus that to multiply by it, and my result won't have a radical in it. That's going to come back to us in a later chapter. Uh, what's it mean to square something? Yeah, multiply it by itself. So this doesn't just distribute into there. That is nonsense. This means this thing times itself. And notice I end up with a 9. I end up with two of these three root 2s. That's a 6 root 2. And then I end up with a 2. 11 plus 6 root 2. Get this practice in. Feel good about this. Um, we will be using this as a tool in later sections. So being having this fluency of this computation um, will ease the later parts of this course. Hey, if you have any questions, please message me or post them in the forum.